Thank you all for attending City Council tonight. Ms. Fister, will you please call the roll? Council President Wilkerson? Present. Council Member Sapone? Here. Council Member Cathcart? Present. Council Member Bingle? Here. Council Member Dillon? Here. Council Member Klitsky? Present. Council Member Navarrete? Here. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. Thank you. We'll start with our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are on the unceded land of the Spokane people and that these lands were once the major trading center for the Spokans as they share at this place and welcome other area tribes through their relations, history, trade, and ceremony. We also want to acknowledge that the land holds the spirit of the place through its knowledge, culture, and all the original peoples since time immemorial. As we take a moment to consider the impacts of colonization May we also acknowledge the strengths and resiliency of the Spokanes and their relatives. As we work together making decisions that benefit all, may we do so as one heart, one mind, and one spirit. We are grateful to be on the shared lands of the Spokane people and ask for the support of their ancestors in all relations. We ask that you recognize these injustices that forever changed the lives of the Spokane people and all their relatives. We agree to work together to stop all acts of continued injustices toward Native Americans and all our relatives. It is time for reconciliation. We must act upon the truths and take actions that will create restorative justice for all people. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance.
have one proclamation this evening, and that is Rare Disease Day. Are you Mary? Yeah. Hi, Mary. And who's your other guest? Bruce. 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 Come on up. I'm going to read a proclamation to you. Whereas 30 million Americans are affected by over 7,000 rare diseases and conditions, and whereas when the national statistics are put on Spokane's population, approximately 6.8% of adults and 22% of children are affected by rare diseases in our region. And whereas the public may be familiar with some rare diseases, such as ALS and childhood cancers, most patients and families affected by what less widely known rare diseases bear a large share of the burden of finding and funding research, care coordination, and raising public awareness to assist the research for treatment and support. Now, therefore, I, Lisa Brown, Mayor of the City of Spokane, on behalf of the citizens of Spokane, do hereby proclaim February 29th as Rare Disease Day. In Spokane, join the global movement dedicated to raising awareness and generating change for the 300 million people living with a rare disease in our community and around the world. I, Lisa Brown, Mayor of Spokane, do here unto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Spokane to be affixed this 29th day of February. Okay. Go ahead, Mary. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks. Thanks for just giving us a couple of minutes. Um, so this is our seventh year coming. It's not coincidental that she'll be eight soon. Uh, Ruth is one of those 22% in Spokane. So we put on a rare disease day event at WSU campus every year just to bring patients, caregivers, there are future doctors and our future nurses. So we want to bring awareness. It's also a campus that has all the things that touch our kids, meds, nurse, PTOT, genetics, pharma. So we're trying to get a little bit of a hub going there. So thank you guys for your time. Thank you for supporting us. It means a lot, especially to us, that those of us that have little ones that are affected by all this. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Yeah. Ms. Fister, if you read the, cons read the consent agenda. Do you want to do the one appointment first? Oh, there is one. Yeah. Who's that? Yes. Reappointment of Jenny Rose to a fourth three-year term representing District 3 on the Office of the Police Ombudsman Commission from September 15, 2024 to September 14, 2026. Any commentary? Councilmember Bingo. This is her fourth appointment to a three-year term? Is that what I heard? That's what it says. Okay, fourth appointment. Are there limits on that? No? There isn't. I believe she's from District 1. District 3. District three. Oh, District 3. Yeah. Okay. She's from District 3. Absolutely. I think it's um, just like other boards and commissions that are pretty specialized when they invest in the training until there's someone else to step up to that space, they get to continue to hold those seats. Yeah. I guess my commentary on that, I hadn't planned on doing this tonight, but I don't think we need somebody serving four terms. There's, I think there's plenty of people who can serve on these commissions who can get that, that training in and uh, can, can contribute. We don't we have plenty of good and capable people who can serve in those positions. I concur there are good and capable people, but unless they actually step up, that's the yeah, challenge. Councilmember Navarrete. Yes, um, I'm happy to reappoint Commissioner Jenny Rose. I worked with her when I was former police ombudsman. She's a wealth of information, amazing, and helps new commissioners also 
just get the training and um, the assistance they need. Any other commentary? I believe there are a lot of vacancies coming up in the office, too, and there was some concern about um, institutional memory carrying forward and not having all new people coming on at the same time. So. Great. All right. All those in favor of appointing Jeannie Rose, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? No. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Thank you, Jenny, for stepping up again to serve the city of Spokane. Now, Ms. Kister, would you like to read the consent agenda? Yes, and I have one question. Did you want to defer item number 12 I? Yes. First? I move to defer. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> item. The Harlan Douglas yeah. item. Second. Okay. It's been moved and second to defer item I indefinitely. Indefinitely. Yeah. indefinitely. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 No's, abstentions, the ayes have it. Thank you, that is deferred. Okay. Purchases, contracts, and claims. Item number one, purchase from Pape Machinery of two John Deere 724P wheel loaders for the waste energy facility, $855,178, including tax. Item number two, purchase from Dobbs Peterbilt, Spokane of a Peterbilt Model 567 heavy haul day cab tractor for the waste energy facility, not to exceed $208,000, including tax. Number three, amendment to five-year value blanket order with L.N. Curtis & Sons, Kent Washington, for the purchase of structural protective gear. For the fire department, duty increases in costs and hiring of new members, additional $1,200,000. Item number four, master value blanket order with Camtech Incorporated Spokane for as-needed purchase of security camera systems and related items. And video management software for multiple city departments, $500,000. Number five, public works agreement with Camtech Incorporated Spokane for installation, repair, and upgrades of security camera systems and video management software from January 1, 2024 through December 31, 2024, not to exceed $300,000 plus tax if applicable. Item number six, interlocal agreement with Spokane Transit Authority for Spokane Police Department Plaza Police Services in and around 701 West Riverside Avenue from January 1, 2024 through December 31, 2024, deferred from January 29, 2024 agenda. Item number seven, service level agreement with Spokane Regional Emergency Communications regarding emergency communication services for the dispatch of fire related emergency services beginning January 1, 2023, $201,276.95 per month, deferred from January 29, 2024 agenda. Item number eight is deferred indefinitely. Item number nine, personal services agreement with Gordon Truck Center, Inc., doing business as Freightliner Northwest Pacific Washington from October 1, 2023 through December 31, 2023 for transmission repair to Spokane Fire Department's Quint 11 fire truck, $27,487.32 plus tax of applicable. Another transmission repair was required in 2023 at a cost of $29,933.69. Total cost for both repairs, $57,421.01. Item number 10, personal service agreements for heavy duty equipment body repair services for the Fleet Services Department and the Fire Department for January 1, 2024 through December 31, 2028 with A, Fleet Painting Spokane, $300,000 plus tax of applicable. B, Western Peterbilt LLC doing business as Dobbs Peterbilt, Liberty Lake, Washington, $200,000 plus tax of applicable. Item number 11, amendment to continuum of care program grant agreement consolidating three of Volunteers of America's permanent supportive housing grants into one, $706,550. Item number 12, multiple family housing property tax exemption and conditional agreements with A, Kendall, Candy, Stickman, and Leon Williams for the future construction renovation of approximately four units at parcel 25133.0222, commonly known as 2404 West College Avenue. B, Steve Schmatz for the future construction renovation of approximately 42 units at parcel number 35192.202004, commonly known as 702 West 2nd Avenue also known as 204 South Wall Street. C. Bauer Properties, LLC, for the future construction renovation of approximately eight units at parcel number 35274.0717, commonly known as 4107 East 28th Avenue. D. Wharton Lofts, LLC, for the future construction renovation of approximately 17 units at parcel number 35191.2305, commonly known as 411 West 1st Avenue. E, Excelsior Wellness for the future construction renovation of approximately 36 units at parcel numbers 25122.2802, zero zero and 0 .1702, commonly known as 2303 West Northwest Boulevard. 
F Thrive International for the future construction and renovation of approximately 51 units at parcel number 36294.0063, commonly known at 6980 North Nevada Street. G 49 G Kids LLC for the future construction and renovation of approximately five units at parcel number 35204.2904, commonly known as 1135 South Arthur Street. H. Jason Paul and Aaron Faw for the future construction and renovation of approximately seven units at parcel 35, parcel number 35171.0407, commonly known as 803 East Sharp Avenue. I has been deferred indefinitely. J. Nicolay and Lyubov Garda Yumov for the future construction and renovation of approximately four units at parcel number 35091.3202, commonly known as 2501 East Upper River Drive. The conditional agreements will ultimately result in the issuance of final certificates of tax exemption to be filed with Spokane County Assessor's Office post-construction. Number 13, an interdepartmental agreement between the Community and Economic Development Division and the Public Works Division from January 1, 2024 through December 31, 2034 to facilitate the development of the land above CSO Tank 34-1 in the East Sprague Business Improvement District, $300,000. Number 14, intergovernmental agreement with Spokane County regarding the biannual renewal of the commute trip production program through June 30, 2025. Number 15, home program agreement with Proclaim, Proclaim Liberty West LLC awarding home investment partnership grant funds for the completion of the Liberty Park Terrace expansion, $1,100,000. 16, amendment to promissory note and deed of trust regarding Proclaim Liberty affordable housing loan agreement increasing the percentage rate from 2% to 3% and extending the loan maturity from 2023 to 2044. Number 17, contract amendment with Family Promise of the Spokane, amending the scope of work to change the supported number of shelter beds from 60 to 17 to concur with the amount of the awarded funding. Number 18, grant acceptance from the Washington State Department of Commerce for Phase 1 Climate Planning pursuant to, to required GMA Comprehensive Plan, 2026 periodic updates, $420,000 revenue. Number 19, grant agreements with the Washington State Department of Ecology for A. Washington Basin Stormwater Project, $262,500 revenue. B. Francis Assembly, Francis Assembly Stormwater Facility, $127,500 revenue. C. CSO Basin 34 I-90 Stormwater Mitigation Separation, $5,015,000 revenue. Number 20, Community Wildfire Defense Grant Agreement with the Washington State Department of Natural Resources to be used on mitigation measures and other actions to reduce wildfire risk, $1,503,000 revenue relates to Special Budget Ordinance C-36493. Number 21, Report of the Mayor of Pending 8, Claims and Payments of Previously Approved Allegations, including those of Parks and Libra Library, through February 9, 2024, total $10,728,548.35 with Parks and Library Claims Approved with respective wards. Warrants excluding parks and library total $10,349,215.75. B, claims and payments of previously approved obligations including those of parks and library through February 16, 2024. Total $6,495,187.65 with parks and library claims approved with their respective boards. Warrants excluding parks and library total $6,233,975.77. C, payroll claims of previously approved obligations through February 17, 2024, $9,260,071.40. Number 22, City Council meeting minutes for February 1, February 5, February 12, February 15, and February 22, 2024. Number 23, personal services agreements for temporary warming shelter services with A, compassionate addiction treatments, Bocam, $184,539.30 plus tax. And B, Jewels Helping Hands, Spokane, $116,688 plus tax. Thank you, Ms. Fister. Again, thank you all for coming. We are now going to have um, comments from the audience. Remember, no clapping. Please direct all your comments to me <laughs> and let us be respectful of each other. First up is Will Hewlings, and then Dennis Flynn, and then Justice for All. Good evening. My name is William Hewlings, and I live downtown. Sorry, I just... All right, so this is a consent agenda. Sorry. Um, so I want to express my full support for OPR 
2024-0047, which proposes assigning a Spokane Department or Spokane Police Department officer to perform general patrol functions in and around the STA Plaza located at 701 West Riverside Avenue. I believe that having a police officer stationed at the plaza will significantly contribute to reducing crime and improving safety in the area. So as you guys know, that area is very, very hot. Lots of assaults, lots of drug overdoses. It's a pretty nasty area to be in. The presence of law enforcement personnel is essential in deterring criminal activity and maintaining order, particularly in the high traffic areas like the STA bus plaza. By having a dedicated officer on site, incidents of crime and disorder can be addressed swiftly and effectively, creating a safer environment for residents, commuters, and visitors alike. I am encouraged by the collaborative approach outlined in the proposal, which involves coordinating between SPD downtown precinct captain and the STA security manager to determine the hours of service. Additionally, the suggestion of a flat hourly rate of $67.14 per hour for the officer's service seems reasonable and fair. Um, it is concerning to note that despite the proximity of the Spokane Police Department downtown precinct to the bus terminal across the street, crime and despair continue to persist in that area. The, this underscores the importance of proactive measures such as assigning a police officer to the STA bus plaza to address these issues effectively. Uh, I believe that implementing this um, ordinance is a crucial step towards enhancing public safety downtown and in my neighborhood. I, that's my neighborhood. So it's very important we have a safe, my neighborhood safe. Um, I Thank urge you. the Spokane City you, well, Council to out. support this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Flynn, welcome. Thank you. Dennis Flynn, I live near St. Charles. Um, in the season of Lent, I'm deciding to move from the tact of desolation that is my usual up here to one of consolation, at least for this one. And I want to thank this council for your work to allocate our tax dollars to provide the basic city services we all depend on. I'm sure there's lots of room for crucial conversations regarding effectiveness and efficiencies. Um, but today's consent agenda highlights the needs that all Spokaneites have for garbage services, fire and emergency, security and police services, and other essential services. Um, in our last meeting, my councilman, in our, my last neighborhood meeting, our, our councilman informed us that the uh, city's facing a significant budget shortfall, maybe as much as $50 million this year. And I know there are a lot of us in Spokane who are also facing challenges to make ends meet. And I want you to know that I pray for you often, all of you. Um, I will especially pray the Holy Spirit will grant you the wisdom to see a sacred cow and or a straw man for what it is and a primary basic service for what it is as you work through this budgetary gap uh, with the mayor's administration and decide how you will fund the basic services the entire community needs while discerning which non-essential services will require probably crucial budgetary management. Finally, I want to express appreciation for your efforts in serving our city even when I don't agree with the results. It takes effort, patience, discernment, and hopefully critical thinking to perform all this. And even though you signed up for it, and I assume you did it out of a sense of duty, and so you probably don't need a thank you, I want to thank you for giving of yourselves to Service Spokane. Thank you, Dennis. Justice? Go ahead, Justice, you're unmuted. Hello, my name is Justice Peralt, Spokane City resident. Beyond the hour, can you hear me okay? I'll get up to check. Beyond the hourly rates and the potential hours that are larger than what is provided in the summary, and beyond the fact that Spokane had remained as the top five most deadly police forces 
uh, per capita for a while, uh, currently ranked number two. We need to stand up for what's right, including those that uh, should still be alive due to police violence. The SDA Plaza downtown has been heavily surveilled and policed for a long time. Basic human bodily function and basic dignity have been denied to those who need access to the SDA Transit Center as bathrooms are heavily monitored and they close all bathrooms but one. This cruelty at the SDA Plaza has been reported to Spokane City Council when open forum was at the beginning of the meeting uh, last year by several people who came to testify every week on the cruel and unusual treatment of our transit riders. Moving open forum to the end, of course, has impacted those riders from testifying for the humanity and addressing this issue. But according to this city council, this move and the one to outright ban open forum makes this open forum more accessible and more equitable, despite people from those communities telling you otherwise. We need to stand for those whose voice has been stolen by this council four to two. This city council hasn't considered solutions to make downtown a place to thrive, but continues to make it a look and feel like a police state with some of the most violent police in the nation. The SDA Plaza and downtown has maximized their effort. Uh, downtown business part, uh, owners have maximized their efforts to make downtown only available for tourism events, while locals and business owners are impacted because those with money never have their better interests at heart. Now we see the state of the plaza with vacant stores where a vision of a hub once was. We need to stand up for community. Thank you, Jason. No, I'm not done. Okay. This is another step to show that Spok what Spokane's values are. Police and the violence over uh, police and violence over access to restrooms, access to water fountains or waste bins, spikes instead of chairs, and a force instead of care. We need to stand up to this brutality and for humanity. On the other hand, the life-saving services, things that happen every year are declared an emergency and get paid pennies, while the apparatus of state violence gets millions. We need to stand up for Spokane. Thank you. Thank you, Justice. Next, we have Hansel Sanchez, then Megra Flatman, and then Justin Holler. And Hansel's online. Go ahead, Hansel, you're unmuted. Sorry about that. Um, thank you so much for having me tonight. My name is Hansel Sanchez. I'm in District 1. Um, I stand before you today to address a matter of utmost importance, ensuring equitable access to city services and departments for all members of our community. I want to express our gratitude for the Council's forward-thinking ordinance, which aims to eliminate language barriers. However, as we celebrate this milestone, we also need to address the critical need for proper funding to assure its success. Our proposal is straightforward. We request the reallocation of 259,000. Hansel, Hansel, we're gonna move you to open forum. This is specifically for the agenda, the Ledger's consent agenda tonight. And we're My not from, yes. We will put you back on the list and call you back at open forum. Thank you. Megra? Go ahead, Meg Ray, you're unmuted. Thank you. OPR 47 regards additional police costs, but this true cost is being obfuscated. The summary in the narrative says, quote, estimated annual reimbursement of $35,000. But on page 420 under compensation, it states that Spokane Transit Authority's payment is, quote, not to exceed a maximum of $140,000. That is a giant difference in price, with the lower price being the one advertised front and center. The summary on page 415 states that the Spokane Police Department will be reimbursed at the incredibly high hourly rate of $67.14 per hour. Definitionally, reimbursement is repayment, in this case for labor. But this high cost is actually higher than most police positions, which means this is not reimbursement. This is reimbursement plus a high extra payment. A year ago in June 2023, council approved raises, including retroactive raises for SPD that will continue compounding for the next three years. Even with the incredible increase in salary, the $67.14 per hour is higher than even the upper range for almost all titles listed in the June 26, 2023 Public Infrastructure, Environment and Sustainability Committee agenda. 
And this includes supervisors and specialists. Page 419 states, quote, SPD officer will be assigned to and based out of the plaza for up to eight hours each day during the plaza hours of operation Monday through Friday. In other words, 40 hours a week. An officer based out of the plaza for those hours listed at a rate of $67.14 would be paid $139,651.20 per year which when you pair it with the fact that compensation won't exceed $140,000 per year, 139,600 makes sense. So the 35,000 is a more palatable public facing number, but it's not true, it's a lie. It disguises the true financial cost that's buried in the paperwork. And that's a really important question, who's paying? Besides the enormous liberty, autonomy and humanity cost of this, there are not details on specifics in this agenda with non-applicable listed when asked if this is approved in the current year budget. It seems like the Spokane Transit Authority themselves is paying, again, not just reimbursing. Their 2024 adopted budget lists their three primary sources of revenue to be voter approved sales tax, grant funding, and fares. None of these three things is supposed to secretly fund police through some dark money scheme. Also listed is the STA will provide the assigned officer and administrative workplace and four parking spaces for marked police vehicles. Quote, provision of the parking spaces is contingent upon the continued operation of the SPD downtown precinct. What? I have four parking spaces is contingent upon the continued operation? Okay. This okay. agreement Thank is you, supposedly Megra. for one officer. Thank you. Justin? Then we'll go on to maybe Justin's online. See if he's online. Justin, go ahead if you're online. Well, let's go to Zachary McGuckin, and then if we get Justin, we'll come back to him. Welcome, Zachary. Hello, my name is Zachary McGuckin. I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. And I'm here to talk about the uh, patrol at the STA bus plaza. Um, normally, if somebody is doing a bad job, you uh, reprimand them for doing their job poorly. In my view, if there's a mental health crisis downtown, the correct move of action is to get that person the services they need so they're no longer a threat to themselves or others. The, what's an inappropriate course of action is to murder a person, which is what our SPD did. And rather than punishing them, rather exactly. than pulling support from them, uh, this city council wants to uh, push to have more police presence at the plaza. I'm just saying that the, what's in the consent agenda is the contract with STA, and just for information, it is paid by STA uh, on a reimbursable basis for that police officer. So that's what that's what we're addressing this evening. Are we going to go into legal contract with them to provide that additional service? Yeah. No, I I understand. I'm I'm saying that you all should not be providing further police services to the STA after. Uh, the actions that our police department has taken these past couple months that have moved them to the second most deadly police force per capita in the country. Um, like I said, normally when someone's doing a bad job at that, what they're supposed to be doing, they're reprimanded for that. So the only explanation I have for why this council could be treating our police with uh, such grace when they're mur actively on a rampage murdering uh, mentally unwell people, poor people, working class people in the streets of Spokane, the people you all are supposed to be serving, is that you all perceive that they are doing their jobs. Because their jobs is not to protect me, it's not to protect the working oppressed poor people, it's not to oppress local, or it's not to, it is to oppress. It's not to protect local BIPOC people. Um, and so I guess they're doing a great job, according to you all. Uh, so thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Any council commentary? 
Council Member Cathcart. Yeah, I'll just say I'm, I'm happy to support the provision that's been brought up a number of times. And if you have problems with having public safety at the STA Plaza, I would take it up with the STA board. But it's really important that we make that a safe space for the entire community so that people actually want to ride the bus and utilize those services. Any other comments? Can I get a motion to approve the? Prepare to vote. No. Oh, just oral. Oh, wrong consent. Just. I was going to go online, but all those in favor of the legislative agenda, please, in that, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? Legislative agenda is approved. Ms. Fister? Ordinance C-36-493, amending ordinance number C-36-467, passed by the City Council November 27, 2023, and entitled an ordinance adopting the annual budget of the City of Spokane for 2024, making appropriations to the various funds of the City of Spokane government for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2024, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage, and declaring an emergency and appropriating funds in. Ordinance C-36-493, Fire Grants Miscellaneous Fund, number one, increased revenue by $1,503,000. A, of the increased revenue, $1,503,000 is provided solely for grant reimbursement revenue from the Department of Natural Resources. Number two, increased appropriation by $1,503,000. A of the increased appropriation, $1,500,000 is provided solely for contractual services. B of the increased appropriation, $3,000 is provided solely for supplies, equipment, and fire EMS fund. Number one, increased revenue by $75,000. A of the increased revenue, $25,000 is provided solely for fire protection and EMS. B of the increased revenue, $50,000 is provided solely as interfund other general governmental services. Number two, increased appropriation by $75,000. A of the increased appropriation, $75,000 is provided solely for contractual services. This action arises from the award and acceptance of the Department of Natural Resources Community Wildfire Defense Grant. Any council commentary? Council Member Bingo. Oh, hang on. Uh, Justin Holler? Are you online, Justin? Justin, if you're online, can you hit star three? Oh. Councilmember Bingo. Yeah, I just wanted to thank our, uh, our fire department, uh, thank our parks department, thank Avista. Uh, many people have been working on this project for, for you know, almost two years at this point to uh, get some things coming forward. Um, as we've seen, um, you know, in the, in the recent past, uh, you know, wildfires are, are a real problem for us. And so uh, being able to uh, reduce fuel, reduce uh, that risk to the city, um, I think is a great thing. And I, I appreciate them doing all that work. And, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be good for us. Any other commentary? <clears throat> Prepare to vote. Great, seven zero. Thank you. Ordinance C thirty six four ninety four as amended this afternoon. American Rescue Plan Fund number one reallocate the appropriation of three million one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars that was previously allocated for the purpose of municipal court justice building. A of the reallocated appropriation three million one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars is provided solely for an operating transfer out to the property acquisition police fund for police vehicle purchase and property acquisition police fund number one increased revenue by three million one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars. A of the increased revenue three million one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars is provided solely as an operating transfer in from the American Rescue Plan Fund. Number two, increase appropriation by $3,128,000. A of the increased appropriation, $3,128,000, is provided solely for an operating transfer out to the general fund. And general fund, number one, increased revenue by $3,128,000. A of the increased revenue, $3,128,000, is provided solely for an operating transfer in from the property acquisition police fund. An American Rescue Plan fund, number one, decrease appropriation by $375,000. A of the increased appropriation, $375,000 is removed solely from the other miscellaneous charges. Number two, increase appropriation by $375,000. A of the increased appropriation, $250,000 is provided solely for contractual services to support Expo 74, 50 years. B of the increased appropriation, $125,000 is provided solely for contractual services for recruitment of Spokane Police Chief and Spokane Fire Chief and American Rescue Plan Fund and the budget annexed there too. Oh, I'm sorry. American Rescue Plan Fund, number one, reallocate the appropriation of $259,553. 
that was previously allocated for the purpose of equity navigators, A, of the reallocated appropriation, $259,553 is provided solely for language access. This action arises from the need to provide appropriation authority to fund police capital Expo 74, 50 years, recruiting for public safety chiefs and language access. We have several comments from the public. Dennis Flynn, Justice for All, and then Megra Flatman. Hi, Council. Dennis Flynn. I live near St. Charles. Uh, again, in the spirit of moving from desolation to consolation, I want to point out this special budget ordinance identifies this as a one-time purchase, and so it has no impact to recurring budgets. I will note that this both is and is not true at the same time. While it is true that this is a one-time purchase, uh, the reality is it is not true because there should be an annual police vehicle replacement schedule that is a component of annual budgets. After all, just like the heavy machinery used at the waste energy plant, these police vehicles have an anticipated life cycle and replacement schedule. Covering a massive bulk purchase of vehicles with one-time funds, most likely due to previous councils and administration shirking their duties by pushing off budgetary purchases because they'd rather do something else, is setting us up to have a large liability to do the same thing looming in our city's future. So in the spirit of consolation, I hope you and the administration will realize this and set up some sort of recurring model that mitigates this unfunded liability when these vehicles complete their life cycle. If I recall correctly, there was a previous vote to allow an exception to purchase gasoline-powered vehicles because production and availability delays of EVs for police vehicles. I would like to note that EVs cost more to produce and purchase, require batteries that make this vehicle significantly heavier, which chews up tires and roads much faster and result in heavier and deadlier crashes. Those batteries are made with metals and rare earth elements, which are hazardous, and they require charging with electricity that is significantly produced via natural gas-fired plants, coal-fired plants, and hydroelectric, hydroelectric dams, and cost significantly more to replace and or repair if there's any structural damage, especially if there's any battery damage. In sum, I would encourage this council to work with the administration and identify the budgetary realities that naturally and necessarily provide limiting guardrails on decisions regarding providing us the essential services we need, including prioritizing these long-term recurring budgetary items over short-term sacred cows when budget limitations require crucial conversations and realizing reality. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Justice? Go ahead, Justice. You're unmuted. For all, Spokane City resident. <clears throat> when Go it ahead. comes down to these vehicles, what I've been asking every time it comes up is that we have data. We don't have any data for when these vehicles are taken out. I know the policy for take home is changing as well. We need to make sure that these vehicles, they are city property, are recorded where they go and when. There's a lawsuit that Spokane is currently dealing with because a police officer slammed into somebody going double the speed limit. Um, and Spokane, of course, is having to shell out all this money because, I'm sorry, Spokane, you know, you're, the police officers in the wrong. They were not doing anything, and they actually charged that individual after slamming into them with their vehicle. Um, if we don't have this kind of data, if we don't have any kind of records, what are we really doing with our police department? We, ha we do have some data, and that data shows that the Spokane Police Department, again, is the second deadliest in the entire United States per capita. That's not the data we want to be bringing home, right? And so if you want to get better data, if you want to make sure you have an accountable police force, that means you do basic level of tracking. Somebody takes out a vehicle that costs $30,000. Hmm, maybe I check a box or have that person's name written down where that vehicle went and went, how many miles they, they drove. That kind of tracking, that kind of accountability is so basic and so necessary for a city like Spokane, where we have so many cowboy police officers who would rather shoot than actually deal with any situations or actually, you know, cowboy around to be all macho than actually understand the law, just like Spokane City Council would rather be macho and stand, continue to suspend a rule rather than actually address the actual issue. Thank you so much. Thank you, Justice. Megra? Uh, 
or unmuted. Oh, thank you. Um, so since 2022, council has approved, mostly through special budget ordinance requests, over 5,600,000 specifically for police vehicles. This is not part of their budget, which is increasing as other budgets shrink. This is special budget requests, over 5,600,000. This includes 3,128,000 on August 1st, 2022, when council declared an emergency and reallocated from the general fund unallocated reserves to the police property acquisition fund for up to 46 police vehicles. There has been such an enormous increase in spending money for police vehicles instead of investment in people and infrastructure. This tonight is concerning American Rescue Plan Act funds. These are funds uh, responding to the public health and economic impacts of the pandemic. They're to be used in specific ways, including providing premium pay to essential workers, providing government services to the extent of revenue lost during the pandemic, making necessary investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure, disaster relief, surface transportation relating to the Department of Transportation, not police vehicles, and community development. These funds are supposed to be used for one of those things. Page 1049 of this week's current agenda says that the City Council ARPA subcommittee on February 1st recommended allocating these ARPA funds towards police capital for vehicles. This was not verbally recommended during the publicly available video. I have not been able to find it and I'm not sure why it's being referenced if it's not available to the public. There's been a lot of talk of budget deficits and the need to allocate funds to people and services to the people. There's been millions spent in the past two years, year and a half even, specifically for police vehicles in addition to their normal budget, when if we invested in housing services, in mental health services, in infrastructure, in people, we wouldn't need so many police. We do not need to fund a police state. We do not need to spend more money on the second deadliest police force per capita in the nation. And I want that number that crazy statistic to sink in. There's 158,314 officially registered cities in the United States. 158,000 and the second deadliest out of 158,000 is Spokane per capita. That's a shocking number. That is an emergent number. That is something we should be declaring an emergency around and working to limit. We especially do not need more vehicles for this. Thank you. Thank you, Megra. Thank Council you, Commenter? Council, Councilman McCackler? Yeah, so last fall when we approved the last tranche of, of uh, police vehicles, we did not necessarily tie it to a particular expense, so it went to reserves. Our reserves have dwindled down to very little over the last several years, and so that's obviously not a palatable option. Uh, but this is a critical need, an absolute critical need. We are way behind in keeping our police vehicles updated. Uh, and with the supply chain issues that continue, it's harder and harder to keep these coming in. So it's absolutely crucial that, that we continue to purchase police vehicles as we can get access to them. In this case, this is really, the vehicles have already been purchased. So this is really just saying, rather than pulling from our reserves, we are gonna pull from ARPA to purchase these vehicles. Um, strongly support, I think it's really important. In fact, I agree with Dennis who came up earlier who said that we need to have an ongoing plan. Thousand percent right, we absolutely must. In fact, the take home car program is probably one of the most important things we could do for public safety, improving recruitment, uh, uh, maintaining our current officers, if not expanding. There's a lot of things there that we, that we have to focus on. The other thing I just wanna mention that nobody's talked about is the fact that within this, we are also essentially allocating money for language access something that is incredibly important and necessary to ensure equity and ensure access and democratization of the decisions that are made here. So it's kind of interesting that that was overlooked by so many, but that is a really key important factor that we're also committing to through this uh, uh, vote today. Council Member Dillon, then Council Member Bingle. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll just add, no one's ever called me cowboy and macho before, so that <laughs> feels nice to be somewhat validated. Um, but um, I think that this fund and using these funds, and I mentioned this uh, last week too, that 
Um, this does underscore the larger conversation for plans for a municipal justice center. Um, you know, that, that has been kicked around and uh, we had a discussion about facilities today. And so um, my hope is that, again, as part of that sustainable uh, budget planning is that uh, we really do figure out a, a plan. Uh, Councilmember Navarrete and I toured this, uh, toured the building last week, and uh, uh, I won't gross you out, but you know conditions are uh, are, are rough. It's horrid, and uh, I think that we can all do better. And um, you know this really does uh, help keep folks out of jail. So um, we'll still have some funding left um, to. Um, that'll be dedicated towards the Municipal Justice um, Center. And um, I know that we have a grant contract later with uh, Smith Barbieri, but um, this really does, I think, I, I hope kind of kick those discussions into higher gear. Councilman Bingo. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm supportive of this, uh, you know, throughout all the ARPA funding. Uh, you know, I've been banging my fists on the table trying to get us uh, more police vehicles because um, what what happened is that we did go away from a uh, from a continuous um, replacement cycle, largely due to budget, uh, budget constraints. And so I'm glad that we're here. It is a priority of ours to make sure that we get that back in here. And as a council, I know that we are we are all supportive of making sure that we have an annual uh, replacement plan, which has been presented to us by Fleet. And so we will uh, be working that into our budget discussions in the future. The other things in here as well um, is that you know Expo 50 is coming up, and uh, one of the Exciting things about this is that we're allocating $250,000 uh, toward the expo celebration uh, for each of the five pillars and uh, $50,000 to each of them. And I think that that's going to help enhance the expo celebration that's coming up, uh, which is going to be a great thing for downtown Spokane. It also uh, allocates $125,000 for a search for a new police chief and a new fire chief. And uh, so all of these things, I think all of these are noble causes. They are all one-time um, dollars. Capital expenses are one-time dollars. Um, and so I'm happy to support this. And I do look forward to um, uh, adding police vehicles and f not, not just police capital, but fire capital into our annual budget as well. Councilmember Klitsky. I also want to echo what Councilmember Dillon said. The Municipal Justice Center is a priority, continues to be a priority, and um, we're really looking forward to seeing something come out of that and improving those conditions. Also, about the police vehicles, we have been in discussions about adding it to the annual budget instead of just kicking the can and then waiting until it's an emergency. But I have also asked for um, more data and better memos when they come in and ask us for equipment so that we, they can give us some alternatives and explain to us a little bit better what their recommendations are and so that it's easier for the public to understand where they're coming from and what we need and give us alternatives for how we spend those dollars instead of kind of um, bringing it to us and having us be in a kind of reactionary mode. So we are looking for data and we are looking for um, better deliberations on those processes. Councilmember Navarrete, did I get to you, Councilmember Um I actually have asked for and have in my desk a report of the how the police cars are being used, um, like the wear and tear, and how many of those vehicles are being taken home. So um, we're not blind to you know, these vehicles being used outside the city. I um, just want people to know that we are keeping a close eye where they are being used. Um, I'm also in support of part of this funding being used for different causes, especially language access and expo. Um, so yeah, I'll be supporting this. Yeah, I'll also be supporting this. I think that there's um, really a lot of excitement about the expo commitment and celebrations that we're going to have um, along with the language access commitment. Um, with regards to police vehicles, we have um, asked lots and lots of questions and it's still not always clear and we've even had a study reported to us about it in the last year. I don't think we're currently necessarily using all of our police vehicles to the most efficient way that we can, uh, but I do understand that we need more and I think that we can look to um, making sure that we can use them more efficiently. I, I don't necessarily agree with the premise that we need more police vehicles for take-home vehicles for recruitment. We don't have that policy implemented right now, and we're just about at full recruitment right now. And so I think that has been um, part of the conversation previously, but it does add a lot of miles to our vehicles that makes them very costly and has a lot of turnover. And so 
I, I, I'm supporting this because it's a reallocation of the funding dedicate or where the funding stream is coming from. We already voted to support this before, so it's just changing the funding source so that we can use the funds for other purposes in the future. Great, great. I'm supporting as well. I have to say I was at Ferris High School today and I went into the welcome class and there was 10 students and out of the 10 students, they all spoke a foreign language and they had one-on-one -on -one instructions going on and they had been in Ferris for only two months. So it just reinforced to me language access. We're not seeing the parents, but our kids are in the schools and they're helping their parents translate. And how do we help them navigate government so they can have access to the same services that everybody else has access to? Support Expo 50, I'm excited about that. There'll be cultural villages there. We want to give money to Expo 50 so those cultural villages could actually pay people and not depend on volunteers because we know it takes money to run a six week event and we absolutely need a new police chief and a new fire chief and that will be a national search which I think the city is ready for and demands. So uh, with that, prepare to vote. Thank you. Ordinance C-36495, Miscellaneous Grants Fund, number one, increased revenue by $20,000. A of the increased revenue, $20,000, is provided solely for receipt of award from the smith Barbieri Progressive Fund on behalf of Municipal Court. Number two, increased appropriation by $20,000. A of the increased appropriation, $3,000, is provided solely for operating supplies. B of the increased appropriation, $3,000, is provided solely for clothing. C of the increased appropriation, $14,000 is provided solely for miscellaneous services. This action arises from the need to take receipt of the Smith Barbieri Progressive Fund Award and execute the award as intended. No commentary from citizens. Any other comments? That prepare to vote. Thank you. Ordinance C-36496, Building Services DSC Fund. Number one, add one classified plan examiner position from five to six. Number two, increase the appropriation for a plan examiner position by $89,876. The appropriation provides budget authority for salary and benefits through the rest of the current fiscal year. A, this is an increase to the overall appropriation level in the Building Services DSC Fund. This section arises from the need to add a new position in the DSC Department to support plan review activities. There is no commentary from the audience. Council? Yeah, I'm excited to support this one right here, uh, you know, for us to reach our goals of, of building thousands of units uh, of housing every single year um, and to do it quickly and efficiently. We need as many people in our plan examiner um, office as possible. Uh, they do a good job right now, and I know that with, uh, with more, um, with more uh, manpower there that they're going to be able to do even more. So excited to do this. Tammy and her team do a great job, and this is going to be a great addition to the city. Absolutely. Ditto. Prepare to vote. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Ordinance C-36497, concerning the definition of public parking lot in Title 17, adding a new Chapter 17C.415 to the Spokane Municipal Code and declaring an emergency interim zoning ordinance. There is no commentary from our citizens. Council. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules for the purposes of amending uh, this ordinance. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second to suspend the rules. Can I just get a clarification from Chris? So all this amendment does, correct, is it just rem removes the emergency clause? Correct. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, correct. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it keeps it as an interim ordinance, so we have to follow the statutory requirements for that. But it pre prevents it from going into effect immediately. Good with that. Okay, so it's been moved and second to suspend the rules. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? All right. Rules are suspended. Council I would Bickle. make the motion to uh, to amend uh, the ordinance as circulated by um, Chris Wright at five fifty seven. Five fifty seven, and 
yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved in a second. Councilman Bingle. Yeah, like you said, all it does is it removes the emergency provision um, from this here. Um, so everything else, I believe, remains the same. Okay. Any other commentary? Prepare to vote. We're voting, oh. on, the We're voting, on, oh. yeah. We're voting on the amendment. There we go. We're voting on the amendment. <laughs> or, we can do an oral motion. Or oral. We have to oral vote on the motion. Yeah. yeah. So we're voting on the amended motion. Oral. 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 All, or? yeah. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any abstentions? Mm -hmm. Ayes have it. So now we need to vote on the ordinance as amended. As amended. Yes. Please place your votes. Okay, it's five two. Thank you. Resolution twenty twenty four dash zero zero two two expressing support for the operational actions to support the American Aerospace Materials Manufacturing Center, the Spokane Tech Hub. I have one commentary. Uh, David Brookbank. Go ahead, David. Yes, this is David Brookbank. I'm a Spokane resident. I'm currently calling from Nicaragua at this time. Um, I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Um, I just want to comment that it's just disappointing to see things like that previous police issue. They get voted 7-0 without anyone discussing the most important detail that people want to emphasize is the violence of our police department. And you can't deal with that by getting more cars, but people just move ahead because that's their legislative okay. job. Point of so, order, yeah. David, are you commenting the, on? The, yes, I am going to go ahead. As Thank I you. think my lead up suggested I would be just making that. I, I wasn't allowed to speak on that issue earlier, which I, I signed up for, but the Gonzaga release on its website about this consortium does not use the word defense or military in announcing it. It's clear that um, they want to hide the defense and military aspect of this. Um, this new defense industry manufacturing hub, which has received federal st startup funds, funds. The coalition includes glo global weapons, behemoths, Raytheon, Raytheon uh, Lockheed Martin, Blue Origins, ATC, and Boeing all seeing skyrocketing profits due to the massive Israeli assault on Gaza and U.S. aggression across the globe. Um, the hub will move into the former Triumph Defense Contractor Triumph Group facility. Um, it's curious, you know, that this is Gonzaga. Are the, the partners uh, the, um, that came together as the, the coalition partner uh, leads on this are Gonzaga and Gonzaga's biggest Funder, John Hemmingson, a trustee of Gonzaga, a man who was convicted of money laundering and served time in a case of attempted bribery and buying influence of the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Mike Epsby, in the case of Epsby's brother, Henry's run for the U.S. Congress. He happened to be pardoned by the ethically challenged Bill Clinton after six months of home imprisonment. But this is just high-level capitalist money slinging and profiteering. Spokane has bet its fortune and its fame on Fairchild Air Force Base for 70 years. Fairchild is not just some backwater place, even though it never gets reported on in our local media or dealt with by our, our, um, our legislature, but we have more aerial refuelers than any country in the world owns. We have more than any other base in the United States or in the world. And the purpose of those strategic tankers is to assure that we can carry out strikes like we do everywhere in the world on innocent women planting rice in Vietnamese uh, rice paddies in the Vietnam War, um, killing children in wedding parties in Afghanistan and Iraq. And we're just banking on more of that. Fairchild is built over the battlefield of the local tribes that we pretend to honor Thank in you, all Mr. these Brooklyn. ceremonies. Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you for joining us from so far away. We are being respectful. Please, no comments from the audience. Councilman, Councilman Bingo. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to support this one. I think that this is going to be a great thing um, out in the, in the West Plains. This is going to be something that helps us you know, compete for grants uh, in the tens of millions of dollars to help uh, cr uh, create um, or to help develop the uh, aerospace uh, sector out, uh, out in the West Plains that, that is going to bring livable wage manufacturing jobs to the city of Spokane, which will bring a lot of other industry coming to it. And in a time when people are, are desperately looking for better wage jobs, in a time when inflation is running rampant, in a time that people are struggling to afford their rent and their food and their gas, um, I think that it would be a terrible time for us, along with any other time, to turn down opportunities for us to create jobs and an industry such as this. And so I'm excited to support this tonight. I'm excited to sponsor it or co-sponsor it with, uh, with Council Member Zappone and uh, Council Member Klitsky. And I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to what this can do for the city of Spokane. Any other council commentary? Prepare to vote. Thank you. We need to take a recess before open forum. We will take a five minute recess before we go into open forum. We will return at seven ten.
Had to get him to cut the music off. We are now back <laughs> on our legislative agenda on ordinance C36497 regarding parking lots. We just made the motion to amend it. It will be back on March 4th. So that was not passed into law tonight. Right, so right, right, right. just for everybody to know that. Thank you so much. We were... We don't do anything. It'll come back on March 4th. Ms. T Fister, let us know that that will be its first reading since it's not an emergency ordinance. So tonight is its first reading. It'll be considered for final action next week. So but there's nothing we have to do to no. rescind our action or anything? Thank you. That, we're ready to go in the open forum. Yeah, sure. Got the list? Sure. Yes. Again, we have two minutes tonight. Please direct all your comments to me. And thank everyone. It has been a very respectful and welcoming space. I appreciate it. Wendy Fishburne, Juliet Barnetti, Will <laughs> Hewings, and then War Bear. Welcome. Good evening, council members, and thank you. I'm Wendy, and I can't stay silent. I had a beautiful friend of mine who knows my heart ask me, are you on the good side or the bad side of the Middle East conflict? So I can't tell you how that stabbed my heart. They know that I've dropped my life repeatedly to go to the Middle East when ISIS was ravaging innocent Muslim families. Because of my Jewish faith practices, I traveled from Nazareth in Israel, crossing over the Jordan to villages around Petra, Azraq in the Iraq desert, and up to Mufraq near the Syrian border, bringing aid to the refugees. I have a heart for the hurting, and I'm compelled into action as well. On October 7th, my home base got attacked. The beautiful eclectic nation where I collected donations from Arab Israeli Christians <coughs> to take to our Muslim families in Jordan was attacked. The kids at the Nova Dance Festival are the peace-loving hippies, dreamers, and dancers that are everyone represents here. The youth of tomorrow were raped, mutilated, and slaughtered. The families and the children that tended the kibbutz gardens and provided transport and work visas for the gardens, these are the victims of the bloodiest, most gory assault ISIS could have ever dreamed of. They are you and me, and I must speak up for them. Am I on the good side or the bad side? I'm on the side that's against rape, against burning babies alive, against attacking Holocaust survivors and young dancers hostage. I'm on the side that doesn't increase human suffering by hiding under schools, hospitals, and refugee camps. I'm on the side that protects women and religious minorities and the LGBTQ plus community. I guess the question is, are you on the good side or the bad side? Please don't be complicit in empowering terrorists with a ceasefire resolution. I stand with Israel against terror. Do you? Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go to Hansel Sanchez. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on down. I'm, it was the cough drop, I promise. I understand that you will eventually be considering <coughs> a resolution to demand an immediate ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. The events in the Middle East may not directly impact most of the people you represent in the city of Spokane, but they do impact me and my family. I have a lot of family in Israel who have lived there for generations and have no other country. I have four generations of cousins whose homes were burned, whose friends were killed and kidnapped. One of my cousins was in her home in Be'eri on October 7th with her husband and three small children, all under the age of seven when Hamas terrorists tried to burn them alive in their safe room. They survived, but if you call for a ceasefire, the message it will send to me is that you think they deserve what happened to them, that my little cousins, who still haven't recovered from the trauma of that day, had it coming to them. How can I trust a city council who thinks my family in Israel doesn't have the right to protect themselves from rape, murder, kidnapping, and looting? How can I trust that you'll protect me right here? If you want peace, then demand that Hamas surrender, freeing both Gazans and Israelis from their terror and ensuring a better future for both. An immediate ceasefire that leaves Hamas in place is a call for another slaughter of Jews, just like October 7th. Thank you. Will Hewlings? <clears throat> 
Good evening again. My name is Will Hewlings, and I live downtown. So I'm going to speak about something I spoke about many times, fentanyl. It's a big problem in our community, and it doesn't seem like you guys are addressing it. But fentanyl is a potent synthetic opioid. It's become the scourge of the streets of Spokane with devastating consequences. Statistics reveal a startling rise in fentanyl-related overdoses, pointing a grim picture of the toll that has taken on the community, specifically uh, the homeless community, the, the community that you care for so much. But they're dying on the streets of fentanyl. Despite efforts to combat this, uh, this problem, the numbers continue to climb, leaving a trail of broken lives in its wake. Every day, I, I'm, I walk out my apartment downtown, and I see people on the sidewalk smoking fentanyl. Literally, yesterday, I kicked my glass door because a lady was down there with her foil and a grown adult. And I, I'm, I feel bad. I didn't mean to shame her but I couldn't believe she was gonna do that right, right near the entrance. So you guys work all this time passing ordinances, making it illegal to do drugs out in the open, and they still do them all over. There's foil, people walking their dogs. I mean, it's, it's disgusting. So I hope you guys, I, I wish and I hope and pray that I hear something about you guys addressing that. But anyways, do something. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Warbear? <clears throat> Yo-ho. How? In honey lechin. Masiapi. O kik jize. Mato. Wo yushkin ya wo chin ya ke lo. Wo yushkin ya wo chin ya ke. Papu you may mana homa, you thought pe, a do a ta, a dino wamu, a tree da hoofly wamu, not the arsu wamu. This is a poem that was made by one of my Lakota elders. <clears throat> he has passed into the spirit world. Euro male, where do you come from? Is not your mother sacred? Is not your mother's life sacred? Is not her children sacred? Do you understand rebirth? I think not. Do you understand being free? Do you understand the sand? Do you understand the rivers? Do you understand the olive tree? Do you understand the rocks? Do you understand the air you breathe? Do you understand peace of mind? I think not. You know locks, you know keys, you know possessions, you know theft, you know destruction, you know prison, you know torture, you know murder, you know rape. There is rebirth. I will return as lightning. Free Palestine. Thank you. Hansel Sanchez. Hansel, if you're still online, can you hit star three? <clears throat> no, I have two other people with their hands up. We will go with then Dennis Flynn, then Justice Brawl, and Jay McPherson. are hard to break. Hi, Dennis Flynn. I live near St. Charles. In recent neighborhood council and in recent land use meetings, my council member bemoaned that the city can only increase property taxes by 1% a year. This is both true and not true. Yes, the law signed by Governor Christy Gregoire limits property tax increases to 1%, but in the spirit of consolation, let's be honest and not forget that the city has imposed multiple licenses, registrations, and fees and that you have already maxed out the local sales tax option, leaving us paying a higher sales tax than two-thirds of the state. Looking at my last four years of property tax increases shows 12% from 19 to 20, 7% from 20 to 21, 10% in 21 to 22, and 4% in 22 to 23, a little bit more than one. And let me tell you, the highest wage increase I received in any of those years, and this was in a banner year, was 3.5%. 
So the crocodile tears that you can't take more of my pay for your sacred cows, when from my vantage point, we don't do a good job in providing essential services, falls on deaf ears. In these years, you're now taking $100 more a month from me, but I've only been able to increase what I put in the church basket by 25 a month. Big mama to the rescue, I guess. Oh, you'll say that's not our budget. That includes Spokane Public Schools, STA, and other things. Well, to us property taxpayers, it's simply property taxes. So either ask voters to approve taxes for a specific purpose, and I suspect policing may garner approval, or, approve, or consider trying to rein in the profligate spending at SPS, STA, and elsewhere locally, as well as a plethora of opportunities at the state level before you ask for a property tax increase to general funds. Or even better yet, quit thinking Big Mama has to do everything and instead reduce our taxes and call on us and our religious communities to fill the gaps. Thank you. Thank you. Justice? Hello, Hello my name is Justice Carl, Spokane City resident. Uh, this city council, especially several members on it, owe uh, an apology to those people who have fought for the rights of all the people in Spokane when it comes down to the, uh, how we act in chamber. Um, you have suspended the standing rule and you have removed the, uh, with, because of uh, unconstitutionality of it all, including removing the rule for recording. And this has continually been suspended every meeting since the rule has been established. This rule has never been upheld because of its unconstitutionality. Those people who have been standing up for the rights of all of the people of Spokane, you have been called disruptive. You have called, said that they have hijacked the meetings. You have said that they are disorderly and all these other things when they are peacefully protesting. Again, I will repeat that they are peacefully protesting. And by the way, that is their right. That is their guaranteed right. And so the, as you continue to, continue to drop more and more restrictions and you continue to try what you, what you will to make it so that these young people no longer want to participate in our local government, which is appalling to me, that, that you would rather attack those people who are coming and studying, who are, are reading these agendas, who are spending their time to understand what's happening in their local government, you would rather punish them than actually do anything to support them is appalling. And then you will call them disruptive. You will say they're hijacking meetings. You will call violence towards them because I have heard other testimonies. I have heard other people walk up to that podium and say, those words, the same words that you use. And you should be ashamed of yourself, Betsy. You should be ashamed of yourself, Sapone. You need to be better progressives. Thank and you, need you to Justice. Your time is up. In our, in, you need to support these young progressives in our city. Council President, just a point of clarification. I believe only one rule is currently suspended, correct? The standing. The standing correct. Rule. Okay. Standing and recording. So well, we've never suspended a recording rule. We've just clarified yeah, what that well, meant. No, we did suspend that one too because it hasn't been officially changed yet. So uh, both rules are suspended. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay McPherson, born and raised in Spokane, as generations previously. <clears throat> America was founded on religious liberty. This means the civil government cannot decide for its citizens how they practice religion or if they practice at all. It is the duty of civil government to allow for the free exercise of religion. Resolution 81 of last year still has not been rescinded. It has not been amended or clarified or apologized for. It was clearly an attack on what its sponsors seem to see as unapproved religion. The resolution listed some statements made on the stage that were apparently so grievous the mayor should be renounced. Those statements were entirely biblical. If we, the people, described in that resolution as hateful, violent, and dangerous, aggressively overthrew the council meeting some Monday evening, could we then get a resolution passed in favor of religious liberty? I think you all know most of us, if not all the people at that worship service, are actually rule-keeping citizens. We conduct ourselves kindly and peacefully in society. Madam President, there has been no disturbance by the folks your resolution labeled hateful, violent, and dangerous. I think you and your co-sponsor knew that at the time, but it didn't fit your narrative. I invite this council to apologize 
for the bigoted resolution from last year's council and also pass a resolution in favor of religious liberty, even if someone's religion is based on the change of truths of the Bible. The Bible teaches that God is love and he knows what's best for us. Spokane would be wise to allow for the free exercise of that religion, just like other philosophies or belief systems. Why not change the city motto to, we all belong except those who practice biblical religion? Your actions speak more loudly than your words when it comes to your motto, where only a, a privileged few enjoy. It appears to be like Resolution 81, merely a game. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jay. <clears throat> Angel Tomeo Sam, and then Sunshine Wigan. Good evening. Uh, I am Angel Tamio Sam. I'm the executive director of Yoyo Spokni. I'm also a core member of Experience Matters here in Spokane, which is a coalition of providers and folks with lived experience um, supporting uh, all services and any ideas we have to to support our city and our county uh, with uh, with the homeless issues that we have here. Um, so I'm here. Uh, to just let you folks know, uh, Spokane, if you don't know already, but you probably do, Spokane has been on the radar nationally since 2019 for our fentanyl overdoses. In 2021, the DEA named our city as one of 11 cities across the United States as having a fentanyl crisis. This issue crosses all partisan lines. It goes without saying that our unhoused is suffering within this crisis, but data proves that two-thirds of those overdosing from fentanyl are doing so in their own homes. The largest demographic on the rise of, these over, of those overdosing are children and youth between the ages of 10 and 19. We are in an epidemic of fentanyl overdose and death. Um, I'm here to extend a hand as all of the things that I do as an advocate in this community to say I'm here to support like, what can we do together to take care of these issues that we have, especially with this fentanyl crisis? Um, right now, Washington ranks third across the United States regarding the number of fentanyl pills seized by the DEA, right behind Arizona and California. In 2022, there were 1,942,514 fentanyl pills seized. In 2023, 3,604,408 fentanyl uh, pills seized. Um, the pills seized uh, in Washington by the DEA in 2023 is nearly four times the amount the agent, agency has seized in 2021. Two milligrams of fentanyl is considered Thank you, to be... Angel, your time is up. Okay, we got to do something about it. State of emergency. Thanks. <clears throat> Sunshine? Sunshine Wigan, um, Spokane, Washington. So I was worried how we put the open forum at the end because I was like, what about the paratransit people? Oh, my gosh. Um, so the paratransit, they can ride it until midnight, I found out. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But at the same time, um, people that take medicines late at night or whatever, um, that might affect them. And I was just kind of wondering if maybe you guys could put like a little thing in at the beginning of your meeting saying, hey, is there anyone riding paratransit that needs special uh, accommodation um, that wants to speak? Um, even if it's on like one of your topics or whatever, that was something. Um, my other thing that I wanted to bring up is um, currently I'm living in my gym, <laughs> which a lot of us Medicare recipients are because of our um, medical it covers the gym and we can use the showers, continue to work, live out of our cars. So there was a huge, I mean huge, like 15 to 25 people, car loads, um, et cetera, of people living along my gym. There's a strip there and there was two other strips, one up in Five Mile. Um, since we have opened up the, the churches uh, with the warming centers, all three of those are gone. And I was like, what the heck is the difference? <laughs> and um, I'm assuming that's probably part of why they're gone now. And those neighborhoods are having less problems um, as there was a lot of police activity having to happen because of that. Um, also on a, a different note, sorry, my brain did its thing. <laughs> uh, 
I lost my thought. But, um, oh, I wanted to say when I stayed, because my car in the below zero temperature, the heater went out in my car. I live in my car because I'm trying to move somewhere else. Um, the thing is, is uh, I stayed in one of the churches, and my favorite part of it was watching my friends that have mental illness take their medicines in a safe environment Thank and you, sunshine. the peace that it brought. Thank you, you guys. Lucas Yanni and Andrew Cowley. I'm very tall, thank you. <laughs> All right, good evening, City Council. I know there's a lot of emotions surrounding this issue, but I would like to revisit Resolution 2024-0009 regarding Israel and Palestine. While it is an improvement over the previous Resolution 0091 in 2023, a starvation and disease rip through Gaza, a both sides approach is simply not enough. The majority of US citizens support a ceasefire, and as of now, over 70 other cities in the United States have passed a ceasefire resolution, including Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, Oakland, Albany, New York, and more. Opposition to killing children should not be a complicated issue. There, are, there is no justification for what I have seen, for the sheer scale of what is happening. This is not a conversation. The situation is desperate. Israel is starving and bombing hundreds of thousands of people while the world watches. I'm sure you've seen footage at this point. You've seen images. You've seen people splattered against the walls and bombed and running against, uh, trying to get aid from food trucks that have been airstrike. So, now that that's all established, we've all seen that, we all know that's happening. As of January 28th, almost one month ago, the Washington State Democratic Party passed a ceasefire resolution. People are waking up to the reality of the situation and public sentiment is shifting quickly. I have seen children's bodies blown against walls, pulverized to bloody pulp, snipers ruthlessly murdering Palestinians trying to get to the hospital, trying to cross the street. The looting of Palestinian homes, gleeful blocking of aid into Gaza, blocking the trucks, camping for days, blocking trucks into Gaza. These people are starving. The list goes on. This, just this weekend, active duty Air Force serviceman Aaron Bushnell, rest in peace, self-immolated on the steps of the Israeli embassy in D.C. His last words were free Palestine. Thank you. Look Please. at your time is up. Thank you. Andrew? My name is Andrew Cowley. Uh, I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation uh, from Spokane. Uh, I'm here tonight uh, to speak against the council's attempt to restrict public participation at City Hall uh, through the new rules to open forum passed last month. On the same night, City Council passed the second resolution on Palestine as a concession to the people after council months President, of public point protest. Of order. Yeah. That's on our agenda for next week. <clears throat> it is on our agenda. I'm sorry. Do you want to speak on something else other than council rules? Uh, I'm speaking on the need for a ceasefire resolution. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we will continue to voice these demands uh, for a new resolution that clearly and explicitly calls for a ceasefire in Palestine and an end to American military aid for genocide funded to the tune of $100 million a year by the taxpayers of Washington State alone. We demand a resolution that voices the people's opposition to the genocidal ideology and system of settler colonialism from the river to the sea and from sea to shining sea and right here on the stolen lands of the Spokane people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Free Palestine. Eugene Knowles, Sherry Barnett. Yes, uh, Eugene Knowles, uh, here in Spokane since 2010. Well, it's been a rough evening here, listening to all this uh, commentary. Uh, I'm just going to do a little rambling here for my couple of minutes. But the first thing that caught my attention was the police. I got here in 2010 when the Auto Zim thing was going on. And I'm a big city guy. I lived in Washington, D.C. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. I've lived in Minneapolis. But for a town this small, 
Uh, you're killing some people here. Okay, now, uh, the next thing is, uh, last time I was up, I, I did a little thing, because people keep uh, talking about this. You have the gavel, then you have the formalities, and the idea was to have an early forum where 10 or 15 people could speak for a minute just to get it off their chest and check out. The next thing was the legislative agenda, then the open forum, which we're having now, but you got those people out of the way who wanted to say something and go. But we keep going over the same thing over and over again. So after a topic comes up five or 10 times, if you've got a spreadsheet to figure all this stuff out, you have an open debate with one-on-ones for a few minutes. And if it keeps coming up, you have a closed debate with three-on-threes. And then you have somebody from the audience on the next section uh, with a, uh, asking questions to an expert witness. So we get somebody who knows something from Gonzaga or somebody to put some of these things to rest. The, the final one here is a closed solution with expert testimony. Now, I had another one, and I'll probably end it here. At least two or three times a year, after the mayor gets 100 days in, have a Q&A, have the mayor come in here and settle some of this stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry? <clears throat> so, oh, thank you. Yes, I'm Sherry Barnett. I live in Spokane. To um, President Wilkerson and all the members of the council, I'm very thankful for Fairchild Air Force Base, the police, the firemen, and for this chance to speak the truth. And I am going to speak the truth, and the truth can be very dangerous. And the truth that I'm going to speak was dangerous to someone named Bonhoeffer. Israel began in 1948. There is a history of them having to fight for existence with Egypt and Syria and Babylon and Rome and Persia, etc. When they begin in 1948, they have been attacked. They have never gone on the attack to the surrounding nations. And around them are 49 Arabic nations. And they have had way more help from outside. Oh, I've got to have more time. They've had way more help. And, and not only just, every time it's happened and Israel's managed to survive, everybody starts saying, cease fire, stop it right now. You go back to where you were. No, Israel deserves a chance to protect themselves. Who goes in when somebody gives them land and puts in tunnels and hides them under hospitals and schools and fills them with armament and goes in unannounced and, and slaughters their populace? No, Israel should have a right to defend their life. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Sharon. And also... Please rescind the thing against Mayor Woodward. She is not uh, a white racist, uh, whatever. She not a terrorist, and she never should have been called that. And that meeting was never such a thing. Thank you. Thank you. Tanya Comstock. Happy birthday is Tanya's birthday today, so happy birthday, Thank Tanya. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm here to um, talk about um, Avista. You know, they, they put out a program for people to help them with their bills, their electric, but they don't tell you, you know, when they're going to start the, the program up, you know, and, the, and people need to know you know when they're starting it up, and when it, and and they just say when it's going to end. You know, they don't say when they're going to start it up. 
you know, and because there's people that are they have high bills with them, and they don't tell them, you know, when they're gonna have have a uh, have them start their their program up, and then, and I and too right now I think STA right now is being unfair to riders too, you know, with the bathrooms, you know, too, when when they when they you have to stand in a long line, and up upstairs. And and they and people have to use the bathroom quick, you know. And and they they, they should know people should can't hold it that long, too, you know. They 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 need to open up the bathrooms downstairs, too, you know. And and, and have them have people stand in lines down there. Too, you know, and and have the security check the bathrooms down there, too. Though, in in case people want to go to both bathrooms. Great, thank you, Tanya. Yeah. I have someone, Linda, no last name. Online. Go ahead, Linda. You're unmuted. In Spokane County. Uh, just outside of the city limits and <clears throat> I'm calling tonight because I'm very concerned of things that have been going on for quite a long time within our wonderful city here and it has to do with um, the smart cities and in 2001 Spokane City Council signed on to the United Nations International Council for Local Init Environmental Initiatives called ICLEI Climate Protection Campaign. If I'm not mistaken, you're still a member. This council is a direct result of the UNIT UN Agenda 21 signed in 1992 by President Bush. Because it was a soft law, it did not need to be ratified by Congress. In fact, later in 2015, the US UN Paris Climate Treaty was not even signed by the United States. Yet, so many cities like Spokane gladly signed on to the ICLEI climate protection campaign. And since then, the city has spent money, resources, and time attempting to comply with the requirements of ICLEI. The rationale for the program uh, was to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Moreover, in 1993, Clinton gave a multi-million dollar grant to the American Planning Association to design a legislative guidebook to be used for every city, county, and state in the U.S. To, in order to implement the U.N.'s Agenda 21. No discussions, no votes, no bills, just a de facto mandate. And here we are in uh, 2024 dealing with um, so many changes. Um, <clears throat> to deal with carbon di dioxide. We now know without a shadow of a doubt that the UN IPCC lied and is still lying Thank about you, the- Thank you, Linda, your time is up. Thank Please you. get out of the Thank that you. thing. We have Monica Tittle and then Zachary McGuckin. Hi, how are you tonight? Haven't been here in a while, but I'll try to make this as quick as possible. I was homeless for about five years on the streets. In 2019, I became unhomeless. Thank you, God. Um, and I understand our need to get the homeless off the streets, without a doubt. I know it better than anybody. But I, recently, I got hurt over the summer, broke two ribs, and got pneumonia afterwards. And I missed one meeting with my Section 8 person, and they kicked me off Section 8 without me even knowing it. Now I'm facing eviction. You're going to have a growing problem. I went to SNAP and I went to the Housing Authority and asked them, and I even showed them proof that I had been hurt and was violently ill, deathly ill, over the summer. And they both asked me, are you currently homeless? No, and I don't. I'm trying to not become homeless. Come talk to us when you're homeless. That is not acceptable. 
especially for organizations that were put in place to help people that are be about to be evicted. There's no way I can, I won't survive on the streets again. My health is too bad. So in order to keep this homeless population from growing, we have to help the people that are about to be evicted. So I don't know what needs to be done, but something needs to be done quick. And that's about all I have to say, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Council oh. President, real quick. Would you uh, leave your information for us so that we can reach out to you? I already did with your... Okay. I did. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Zachary McGuckin, and I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Um, a lot of people have said that the uh, council's original resolution on the uh, Gazan genocide uh, was a mistake, and I agree with that. I do think it was a mistake, but not for the reason that um, some have stated. I don't think it was wrong of you to weigh in on an international situation especially since it's an international situation that impacts so many people here at home. Um, what I'd like to look at is there was that resolution, and the last time this council had weighed in on an international situation before that uh, was a statement of solidarity with Ukraine. Both uh, our proxy war in Ukraine and our proxy war in the Gaza Strip have been extremely profitable uh, for our military industrial complex, and both have also had direct involvement from Fairchild Air Force Base. And so um, right now, since Israel has stated that their ground invasion of Rafah is going to be on the 10th of next month, you all have a window, an opportunity to take a stand against the military industrial complex and for the people of our city. Um, you have a stand to speak with moral clarity against war and for peace. The October 9th resolution was passed extremely, with an extremely quick turnaround. And so I hope this council will take this opportunity as seriously and have a ceasefire resolution on the ballot, uh, or on the docket next, next meeting before the, uh, before the 10th when Gaza is uh, is set to be invaded, the last safe area in Gaza is set to be invaded by the genocidal Israeli military. Thank you, Zach. Uh, Dave Brookbank, are you still online? Yes, I am. Go ahead, David. Yes, David Brookbank, member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation from Nicaragua. Um, on March the 6th at 7 a.m., I was the first in line to renew my monthly bus pass and catch my 7.05 bus to my state job. I knocked on the window to get the attention of the cashier standing with her back to me. Instead, I was met by an STA security cop who told me not to bang on the window. I said I needed to renew my pass to get to work by 7.30. When I knocked again, I was grabbed by security, telling me I was being arrested. I was then zip-tied by a Special Commission STA security guard and taken to a second-floor lockup detention cell in the back of an office commandeered from the STA engineering staff for use by private security and city police forces. I wondered whether anyone was aware of the existence of this off-the-book cell with its white walls, locking door, jail cell bench, and fisheye camera. I later learned from three council members, including Council President Ben Stuckert and Councilman Ben Brian Beggs, that no one did. Still handcuffed, I was placed on the jail bench with a fisheye camera staring at me as the reinforced door shut. The next thought that came to my mind was Sandra Bland, the African-American activist who improperly was stopped by Texas State Patrolman, brutally arrested, and then found dead three days later in her Dallas, Texas jail cell. Why would that occur to me, an older white male? Because the lockup cell is in Spokane, a city with one of the country's most deadly police forces, prol proliferating private security forces, acting as abusive force augmentators, augmenters for the police and racial disparity in policing. After sitting in the cell, I was handed a 29-day exclusion letter, handcuffs were removed, and I was released. The detention cell, off the books, unreported, unscrutinized, and likely operating outside legal bounds, is just one reason for my concerns about the helter-skelter manner in which we are relocating police forces. Um, when 
I want to mention that um, STA S Director Susan Myers, who herself receives a little scrutiny and needs a whole lot more, calls the detention cell simply an inter interview room. The interview room is re re referenced in hundreds of incident reports. Thank you, David. Obtained. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Justin Holler? That brings us to the end of our open forum. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Nay. Absolutely. <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs>